We're going to talk about the malware and operations targeting North Korea defectors and a malware which is linked to Lazarus group uh, that we researched. So let's start. Yeah, yeah this is uh, a little introduction of myself. My name is Jae Min, and I'm a mobile malware researcher at McAfee and previously worked at a Korean game company and Kisa, which is a Korean national cert. And this is my Twitter. I only have 50 followers, so I need some more. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And we started doing Shisa just uh, this week, and we started to love it. Yeah, thank you. So my turn. Uh, my name is Ini Han, and I'm also a mobile model researcher at Megafi. Uh, same team with J1. Uh, so uh, I, yeah. Less than me. <laughs> And I have been working in security industry for about 10 years. And before joining this industry, I uh, worked as application developer for three years. Oh, yeah. Please also follow me <laughs> on Twitter, please. OK. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about our discovery in the mobile world, which assumed linked to Lazarus Group. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you might know, the Lazarus Group is one of activity, uh, active cybercrime groups. This group is assumed to be linked to North Korea, also the U.S. government announced that North Korea is behind of this group, but uh, who knows? The, the activity has been started at least since 2009, which huge scale of DDoS attack targeted U.S. and South Korea. The DDoS attacks were continued since then, uh, the operations of Rajar's group has been going on such as uh, Dark Soul and Sony Pictures Entertainment Hack. Mm. Uh, what is the group doing nowadays? So recently the uh, group focused on to make money, hence the group targets cryptocurrency and finance companies according to uh, blog posts from several security companies, uh, global banks were hacked or found evidences of uh, hack attempts, such as bon uh, Bank of Poland and Bangladesh and uh, Philippines. Also, in February this year, Megapi posted about uh, malware stealing bitcoins uh, from big team. Mm, it assumed or uh, linked to Lazarus group as well. Uh, now, let me start to talk about main story of my session. It focuses on explain why we think that the uh, malware is linked to Lazarus group. Yeah. Mm -mm. In end of June uh, last year, uh, 2017, uh, we found a malware uh, which is trojanized uh, APK of the most popular five, most popular fiber app in Korea. Uh, according to our telemetry data, the trojanized APK was installed on only one device. So, I guess the trojanized APK was generated for a few targets, uh, few targets. Yeah, and uh, also, and we. Three variants of ERF file have been found uh, until now, which are not embedded in APK. We couldn't find the way how it was uh, implemented on Big Team's device. Uh, as you guys might read, uh, there is a blog that uh, that. Uh, Palo Alto Networks has released regarding same malware, uh, which I, I researched. Uh, it describes how um, ERF is implement, uh, implemented on an Android device. But the, the, implanting, uh, the implanting 
technique they described can't be applied to destroy Janaji the Bible app uh, anyway. We are keeping eyes on it and trying to find the way of spreading the spreading the APK. The discovery of the, this malware was a kind of accident. I wrote a rule for tracking the actor of the cyber attack targeted uh, Sony pictures in 2014. There was a condition for checking the type of file that checks whether P or other types. Mm. At that time, I didn't guess the hex hexadecimal values could be uh, used for malware for another platform. Uh, the guess was totally failed, but uh, luckily, luckily the line has been removed when I was organizing my rules. So that is why I do not say that it was found by hunting. So, yeah. And, but at least I learned, I learned one thing that don't make rules too much tight. In this case, the hexadecimal values are enough to hunt. So when you are writing a rule, Please don't make it too much tightly. Next. Uh, it's, uh, <coughs> the APK is signed by a debug certificate. Above is the certificate which for res limit one. So also on ELF file is added to SS directory. And there is point to aware of the type of OS which model developer works on. Uh, the each files of APK have make time. The, uh, it means the APK repackaged repackage on uh, NTFS. Uh, so hence we are supposing the malware develop malware developer repackaged it on Windows. When we looked into the compiled decks, very simple and small codes are added to run trouble activity, which is flash activity. Yeah. The added codes will be executed when the Trojanized app is being launched by on create, on create event on of the activity. The purpose of added codes is to drop on ERF file which is contained in SS and loads it as process. After that, the uh, app runs like normal app, so it is hard to realize that it is malware from user side. If, if the dropped ERP successfully executes, it turns the device into a bot. Yeah, uh, we've found uh, three more variants of the Vector, which is embedded to the Trojanized uh, Korean Bible app uh, until now. So each of the variants are totally the same, excluding the IP addresses of C2. And it is the only one which is embedded in APK of samples that are submitted to our internal system and uh, or virus store. Once the <coughs> backdoor ERF starts, it turns into a zombie, zombie process to protect itself. It remains as a zombie even if the uh, parent's process terminates. As long as the execute method of DEX has been implemented successfully. Hmm. The IP address, the address array, uh, array is encoded by a simple, uh, exclusive, or routine. When it is loaded into memory from the read only data section, that uh, encoded data is written to a file. Uh, the encoded file is then, is then loaded into memory to select an IP address to connect to.
one of C2 is selected randomly immediately uh, before the backdoor process attempts to connect to each address. The attempt is performed repeatedly to successfully connect with one of C2s. Okay. <coughs> Once connected with a C2 server, the malware begins to fill the buffer using as a callback beacon. Uh, top left shows shows a uh, part of the message generating generating code. Uh, several pieces of the packet are hard coded. In particular, the bytes at offset zero, four, and five. After we realized that the message only pretended to use the SSL handshake handshake protocol, we understood the meaning of the hard coded bytes. Uh, they, uh, the bytes at offset zero is the handshake type, uh, offset four and five uh, are the SSL version of a handshake layer. After sending the callback beacon, callback beacon, the uh, malware assigns global barriers, uh, variables that contain device information which is transferred to the uh, C2 server, once it receives the command code uh, 5249 hexadecimal, hexadecimal uh, left, <coughs> left code is jump table for implementing commands and its stock code. Based on the jump table, the backdoor has 13 functionalities. Uh, the functionalities are commonly contained in uh, many backdoors. Uh, there is no function looks special. Mm. Oh, now so. Mm. Okay. Oh. Oh. Uh, it was a little bit hard to find the similarity of code between ARM-based ERF and x86-based PE because the compiler, linker, and builder are totally different. So. It contains the hexadecimal values that are used a seed value for generating a key for encryption and decryption. Uh, the values the values and the shape of a function totally similar to a P, which was used as a, as a, as a on weapon in the in the cyber attack to uh, solid pictures in 2013. Yeah. We uh, also we found similarities from uh, several binaries that. Uh, used from the the other operations which are assumed operated by uh, Rajar's group. Uh, I'm going to tell you why we uh, can say the, the Android malware is linked to Rajar's with high confidence. Uh, the protocol for communicating to C2 is totally same and uh, several IP addresses of C2 are over it. Uh, in over at time. It means they share C2 among the operations. Mm. The both of code to establish to uh, C2 server are almost the same. The purpose of the code in next slide, yeah. Uh, this slide describes uh, the protocol for establish and communicate to C2 server simply uh, to transfer uh, transfer a uh, message from the source. The malware first uh, sends a uh, five bytes message to the destination. The message contains information on the uh, size of the next packet, a uh, hard coded value, and the type of message. The hard coded value is. 0301 hex, hexadecimal, and the type of message can be from 14 to 17 hexadecimal, 
Uh, and the message type can also be used to check the validation of the list of the packet. If to establish it to a C2 server, disguised SSL handshake is processed, uh, immediate, immediate, uh, immediate next step. After established to C2 server, the all of packets for communication are encrypted. This is uh, just capture the packet which is sent before uh, transfer real data. Okay, so this function generates a uh, disguised client hello. Uh, both have a hard coded supported uh, encryption version field as uh, 0301 uh, hexadecimal. It will be checked for validation of message. The disguised client hello packet contains uh, or benign domain on server name indication field. Uh, we suspect it is an evasion technique to uh, avoid detection by security solutions looking for suspicious behaviors. Okay. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, the both uh, vectors, vectors to use uh, same protocol. Uh, we could confirm when analyzing the function for receiving a message from the C2 server. This function so shows the protocol for transferring a message between the backdoor and the C2 server. Uh, this looks also not good for comparison, so I prefer the pseudocode uh, from the list function. Uh, this is list function and structure for mm, uh, for five data that uh, firstly sent to uh, C2 and okay, so uh, this is the code of list function. We can confirm the protocol for communicating to C2 server easily. Uh, this function can process the two cases of receiving data. First case, uh, when the five data, five bytes message is uh, received it passes the data and check validation through uh, 301 he uh, hexadecimal value and one byte of the type of message. Uh, second case when real data is received it receives the size of data which was uh, passed from first five bytes. After that uh, received data is decrypted. Oh, yeah. Oh, this table shows the uh, IP, IP addresses of C2. There is several overlapped IPs and similar code for communicating server. Uh, we can guess that uh, malware is linked to Lazarus group with high confidence. Uh, let me pass the mic to Jaewon. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about a threat, new threat actor group I discovered. Uh, it all started with this article I just read uh, last year. So North Korean defectors and other related groups are targeted by unknown actors on KakaoTalk, which is a famous chatting app in South Korea. So it's a target attack since they chose to whom they should implant spyware. So we got interested in this group and started to track them. If you see on the right side, there are screenshots of KakaoTalk messages uh, North Korean defectors or journalists actually received. So in, yeah, in the next slide, we'll dig more deep into this uh, actor. So while tracking the malware that was introduced in the article, uh, we were able to uncover additional malware operations by same threat actors. This group is very active. All the operations we discovered have happened in less than a year, in 2017. And we have named this group as Sun Team because I was investigating uh, Dropbox cl cloud storage and used these uh, AP REST APIs to search for all the deleted, deleted files. And there was one folder deleted, which, was, uh, which the name was Sun Team folder. Yes, so let's look at the details. Yes. So 
I, we discovered three uh, different types of malware used by this Sun team. So, yeah, to year 2017 was a busy year for Sun team because most of the operations were done in 2017. Yes. The data is still being uploaded to the cloud storage, so it's hard to like say when this malware was killed or unfunctional. Yes, so in the next few slides, I will explain to you guys how they distribute, distributed malwares. First case, they used Facebook. So they created this account and started posting on related uh, North Korean defector groups or support groups uh, to make them download their malwares. So if you see on the left uh, screenshot, it's saying, hey, do you know what this NK, NK prayer app is? Uh, you just installed it on your device, and other guys like, nope, I don't need it. And yeah, on the fa other Facebook groups, they keep on posting this malware, yeah, and just looking for advice, like, hey, I was looking at this NCARE prayer app, and I need some help with this. Take a look at it and tell me. Uh, yeah, on the right side, this guy also like acts as is also a victim, saying. Hey, this, that Anchor prayer app is uh, actually malware, and my friend who introduced me to it is now gone. Yeah, so after this, this NK prayer app has gone down, they started activating on another account to distribute a new malware. So when this account was inactive, his profile image was basically Tom Cruise, but uh, when the previous malware has been gone down in February 1st, 2018, they changed the profile image to some old guy in Korea, random guy from internet. They just took the image and made their own profile. And he started posting like, hey, uh, my son made a new uh, app. Please download it and check it out. And also another, some food-related app saying, Hope you guys live a healthy life. Please check this app and see what you can get. And if you see on the comments on the right side, this guy who posted NK prayer malware says, hey, this app is so useful, I love it. So they're helping each other spreading the malware. Yeah, so some similarities in this Facebook accounts, they basically use foreign account names instead of Korean names and also use foreigner's image as profile when inactive, and then they change, change to something else that's some familiar to Koreans when they become active. And they're fr Facebook friends with each other, and they have weird personal information like they're currently living in Pyongyang, but they are uh, currently working at an American company. Uh, yeah. So there are many Facebook accounts that are still inactive, so we are keeping an eye on it. Yes, other case is Kakao Talk. Yeah, so according to the article, journalists that Daily NK was approached by someone named Yi Taegyeong. And if you see closely, uh, it has no profile image and ha you, uh, using the US number. Uh, yeah, this account is actually a fake ac account created by some team to impersonate South Korean people and use them to approach victims. So we'll look closely about this fake accounts in more detail in, uh, in OPSEC's fails part. Yes, and they also used hacked web servers to distribute these mobile mirrors. So the one, the shortened URL we saw in the article actually expands to this ihoodtech.com domain, which is a company which produces uh, hoods. Yeah, so it seems there's a, there was a file upload vulnerability in the past uh, so we weren't able to get this newslist.php file, but we found in the customer service board, someone tried to upload the web shell. So, and if you see which directory it is uploaded, it's in the same directory as the newslist.php file. So we are guessing that maybe they use this vulnerability in this board to upload web shells. Yes, so another corporate web servers found distributing Trojans which was the same as the one dropped by NK, NK Prayer app. So this server actually uses Android exploits publicly disclosed by uh, Old Fresher, 
uh, at which she released the Cancer West and dirty cow vulnerability to, to escalate privilege on victim's device. And also uh, we found web shells as well. Uh, the hash value for password, if you search for similar things in Google, there, there was actually another Korean web server with a web shell that has same pass, uh, hash value. Yes, so the right bottom screenshot is actually the screenshot of the, this corporate web, web server. You can see there, someone tried to upload this file named webshell.php. So we investigated a little and we found out that you are, we are actually able to upload this kind of uh, file by using this notice board and we found another route to upload a web shell such as like upload the resume feature. Yes, so it seems that this particular server has more things to investigate than what we initially thought. Uh, so there was some talks on the Twitter that this server is also distributing some other type of malicious files. So, uh, well at this moment we are not sure whether this server is being used by different groups or not. We need some more investigation. And this is the actual log file we found on the server which tells us that tons of people have been accessing this server from a variety of resources, uh, sources. Uh, another case, Google Drive. So all the initial NK prayer app links were all Google Drive uh, links. The uh, good thing for us is that when threat actors have to, when they upload the malware on, on Google Drive, they have to expose their Gmail account. So these Gmail accounts led to the uh, Facebook, Facebook accounts used by some team. And there was also actually another one uh, uploaded on Google Drive, but they deleted it before taking a uh, screenshot. But this all the screenshots of different droppers they used. And the last case is Google Play. So we found out that they, some team tried, uh, uploaded this malwares on Google Play uh, earlier this year, maybe January. Yes, they uh, unloaded it as a unreleased version, which is like early access program, beta program, I guess. So it, the, the food related app and the fast app lock app was actual malware. But you can see that Google Play Protect verifies it and says it's not a malware. But if you re analyze it, it actually is. Yeah, so I would tell you a little about all the malwares we found. So the first one, this fortune telling app. Yeah, so it's faking as a fortune telling app, but the package name is ac actually play.google.youtube. And variants exist, faking as a different type of app, but their trojans, they implant is actually the same. Uh, so they, this malware uploads victims data to Yandex Cloud. So this data includes call recordings, co uh, contacts, SMS, external storage data, and if your device is infected, all this data are stored in Android data, com .sec Chromium. So this, this uh, data they upload to Yandex is actually encrypted, but we got lucky and found uh, one file that was not encrypted, so we were able to see what was leaked. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what it is in the next slides. Yeah, so next malware, NK Prayer. So Anchor prayer in Korean Pukangido means the app for praying for North Korea. So we found another variant that drops same Trojan but just faking as different apps. Like we found these four kinds of uh, app that drops same Trojan. So this fakes uh, telling the user to we need some kind of permission to actually use this malware. So please turn it on, but. When the victim turns on the accessibility uh, permission, uh, yeah, it shows this full screen advertisement video and drops the tro Trojan in the background. Yes, there's many variants in, of this NK pair malware, but basically they use Yandex and Dropbox to upload data and download additional payload or some command files. Yeah, this example is the command file for one type of this malware. So, 
there are some designators for checking which part is for which value. So the first, the number three, if you see on the left, that's the number of the command they, the victim's device should uh, execute and so on, other config values. And if you check what kind of accounts they use uh, for creating like Dropbox storages, you can see that the account names are actually actor or actresses or celebrity names in Korean TV show. So more details about this blog is uploaded on McAfee blog. Yes, so third type of malware we found. Yeah, this also have package no name of Google services. Yeah, dropped by fake apps. Yeah, it also uploads this victim's device information to Dropbox. The different thing is they actually exhort the files, but the keys are in the cloud and you can download it, so no big issue. Yeah, it has similar structure as NK Prayer does the same, but this one, they have this uh, downloadable payloads and extensions and so on, but when you try to decode it, only uh, part, of, of, part of the file is actually decodable. So if you see the logs of victim's device uploaded to the cloud, it's all just errors. So they quickly abandoned this malware. Yes, uh, this is the one we found this January. It was uploaded on Google Play. It's for telling users which food ingredients go well together. Yeah, this app was the one heavily promoted by Sun Team's Facebook account. Yeah, when, in, when it, it is installed, it uploads device information and uh, data in ex on external storage. So when we found the malware, it, the download count already exceed, exceeded 50. Yeah, so we found in, uh, interesting images on the cloud that this malware was connecting to. So the Sun team probably wanted to fix victims as a fake AnLab antivirus, which is a Korean co a security company. So there's many things wrong in these images that probably no Koreans will get fixed for this. So AnLab, they used wrong spelling and they made grammar errors and they used some wrong word for, uh, to mean actual computer file. Yeah, so they have very bad designs. Yeah, the last malware, uh, it's called Fast App Lock. It's for locking other apps when they're not in use. So it's kind of privacy protection app. But as usual, in the background, they upload device information and so on uh, to the Dropbox in this case. Yes, how are they linked together? So this diagram looks complex, but yeah, but all the malware samples we discussed are somehow all related, like devices used for testing and the Gmail accounts used for NK prayer malware, and those uh, for the recent Google Play malware are all the same, and like Trojan dropped by marketing app and has same fingerprint as the one dropped by NK prayer. And actually, the fortune telling app's uh, Google Drive URL was actually found in a text file uh, inside the SD card of a test device used for NK Prayer. So this slide will be uploaded, so you can check it out later. Yeah, we'll look at some offset fails they did, so which expose all the data. Yeah, so we are analyzing one of the drop Dropbox storages, which used for C2 server for the NK Prayer app, I think, yes, and found uh, tons of test data they probably uploaded it by accident while testing their malware. So inside the test data, we were able to find valuable information such as like malicious actors' device information uh, and other versions of the malware we weren't aware, email addresses, accounts, and so on. Let's see what we have found in more detail. Yes, they actually exposed all those device information of their test device, including IMEI, International Mobile Equipment Identity, Value Model, Build Versions, and so on. So following this geographical info, they brought their device from all over the world. So there was one 
Galaxy Note 4 from US, Galaxy S7 Edge from Brazil, and LG V20, LG G4 from South Korea. Yes, this is the models of test devices we found and related Gmail account. You can see that mostly they used, they were connected to VPN, IP, uh, VPN but if you see the first, uh, first uh, device, uh, November 2017, they were actually connected to VPN, but soon after, they exposed this, some IP address in their log file, which says it's Pyongyang, but I'm not saying it's, we are sure North Korea or not, but just, uh, yeah, the log file just says exactly the same thing on the slides. So the funny thing is, uh, this guy using Galaxy S7 actually exposed his phone number on the uh, device log file. And the time was 2018 February. So if you search the phone number, then it says it's from Russia. So anyone, if you want to give him a call, I'll let you know the phone number so you can give him a call and say hi. Yeah. Yeah, the device yeah, log file actually has installed apps list. You can see that they have their own malware installed for testing. And as you can see, there's a lot of Korean apps installed. So definitely these guys are familiar with the Korean language. And you can see there's a lot of apps related to learning English. So I guess they're quite interested in learning English. Yeah, and there's this app called Text now, which is kind of call and messaging service. Uh, you can generate a virtual phone number, so we'll discuss in later slides. Yes, so, yeah, OPSEC fails, case two images. So some images were found in their Android gallery of their devices. So you can see that, the, uh, I don't know which model they, the laptop is, but yeah, they have, I think, LG phone cracked. And definitely not a cookie or snack you can see in South Korea. So I'm still tracking what kind of food they're eating. Yeah, yes, and he uses Toshiba mouse and like lo likes plants. Yes, so one of the test device had this tons of data in their SD card, which was basically just uploaded on Dropbox, which I found. So, yeah, so each folder contains basic information and SNS images of random South Korean per uh, person which is used to create fake identity. So each folder is for different person and each, and each folder, it has some profile text uh, file, which inside it you can see that this person graduated from this university and at 2004, gra yeah, and so on, and where they work, what, what are their blood type. But the interesting thing is in South Korea, to mean the blood type, we s there's a separate word, uh, but as you can see in the text file, it uses pihong, which, which according to Wikipedia, is the word North Koreans use to refer to blood type. So, yeah. And there's, as you can see, I mentioned, they use a shortened URL for Google. You can see there's tons of generated shortened URLs. And uh, so the iHoodTech.com, that's the hacked web server I just mentioned you, and uh, Google Drive URL for other malware we weren't aware of, so we downloaded it and analyzed it as well. And in the center, account.txt, yeah, this is the actual fake accounts they created to impersonate people, which is like the information is in the each folder. Yes, so we checked if these accounts are really there. So, for example, the EG Shen, it's, uh, yeah, we don't kind of uh, write this way in, when we are writing a uh, South Korean uh, name in English, but it's kind of like Chinese way to spell it out. But anyways, you look for that uh, account in Kakao Talk, you can actually see that they're using the profile image which was, which, uh, which was in the SD card folder we just discussed. And it's saying, 
my phone is not working, so please give me, your, give me your phone number. But the way they wrote the Korean is very awkward and definitely not a, like the tone used by young women as they think they are. So yeah, so if you s try to like recover the password of these accounts, they, this down service actually tells you what kind of phone number they use to actually register. So it's saying it's from US, an area code 8060. So this number points to this US, but are they really in US? Uh, probably not, why? I just told you there's a TextNow app installed in one of the devices. It's free text and call service. You can get a phone number by entering the area code. So you can just yeah, create any uh, phone number you want. So it's high, with high possibility that threat actors are using TextNow generate number to sign up for these services. Yeah, so like services like Down, which requires phone number. So th actually there was some logs, TextNow logs on the file also. You can see this username, Maxwell, blah, 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 and email Shanghai and using email domain mail.com. And actually you can check that phone number they registered in TextNow is actually 860. So yeah, we're, we're pretty sure the, they're not currently located in the US, they're just using fake number. Yes, so in the first few slides, I, I told you that this fake Korean account with the name Lee Taegyung was used to target journalists. That's the screenshot on the right. And the left one is the one I found on the text, uh, test devices. So, you can see it's, it's using the same name and has no profile image and use the US number. Yeah, I won't tell you about the, what the chat is, but yes. And they also left the exploit files, uh, source codes and binaries and scripts in their SD card and uploaded them to Dropbox as well. So the ex exploit files I found were basically dirty cow burns and like Chrome burns that old fresher released in Mosec and Cansec West in 2016. The left left one is the exploit code disclosed by the uh, old fresher. Right right side is the like the modified version I found. So just basically changed the hard coded address or added some functionality to install their own malware. Yes, same thing. They try to use the state uh, directory of neighbor app, which is like a Google, Google service in Korea. So basically they just, just uh, modified all the available exploits. Yeah, so I mentioned some corporate web server was hacked uh, and it was distributing malware and had Chrome exploits. So basically they had this JavaScript file that exploits Chrome exploits and drops dirty cow pay, exploit payload and try to d install the system update.apk, which is the Trojan dropped by NKPayer malware. Yes, so we found some shell scripts and actually they left out either DV file. Or, so I was really curious is whether Ilfox sends uh, cells they're either pro to this these bad guys, but they were actually just using the leaked version of the hacking team. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the latest Google Play uh, campaign, they actually deleted all the relevant test log files quickly. Yeah. But if you check the document of Dropbox API, you can see that there's a recover. Uh, uh, sorry, restore API. Basically, you can restore any deleted files if it was deleted less than like 30 days or so. So, I, one by one, I uh, re restored all the deleted files and checked all the data and deleted it again so they won't know. And yeah, so we were able to confirm that these guys are using same t test devices and like same, using same Gmail account. 
Yes, some, some data, data we discovered. So victims are basically North Korean defectors and support groups. Many sensitive data were leaked. As you can see on the left, there is a photo of South Korean passport and some China bank credit cards and, and some phone contacts that had all this phone number of people related to North Korean or, or defectors or North Korean groups. So the, yeah, the contact file you see on the right, that, that was the actual uh, encrypted uh, file that was unloaded by, uh, to, I think, Dropbox by a total accident. Yes, the last slide. Uh, yeah, so one of the victims were actually taking part in this prayer meeting for North Korea. Uh, and the image he had in, on his device has also had also GPS data, so we were able to locate where this prayer meeting was and all those, uh, yeah, the photos and stuff. Yeah, so there's a lot of more data we didn't include on the slides, but yeah, there were basically tons of data. Yeah, conclusion. Target attack against North Korean defectors and related group has moved to mobile landscape. Threat actors are modifying apps that are popularly used by the target or make a fake app that might catch interest. And they're actively using SNS to approach targets. Yeah, so mobile users must be careful about what they install on their device, even though it's downloaded from Google Play. And lastly, use iPhone. Thank you.